Hey, can you guys see this? I don't know if this is evident to you guys, but I'm driving rather straight, straight-ish, and my steering wheel is pretty crooked. And I don't, maybe I need to get some light on. You can see how badly off it is. There, while I'm driving straight, all right? So what happened is that this car has been sitting for a while, for maybe four months or so, close to four months, three to four months. And today I decided to take it out just for a test drive, make sure everything is good before setting it down for winter. And I took an, a pretty aggressive left turn. And when that happened, I heard the, I felt the vehicle kicking out in the rear, um, which means that one of my tires spun and I could feel it basically pushed me to, towards the right. I was starting I was turning left and I could feel my rear end get pushed towards the right, which means it was helping me steer. But when that happened, I got a bunch of lights on the on the on the gauge cluster. And let me show you what those lights are. Let me get let me park first and then I'll show you. No, let me just keep driving. I think this will be a pretty good video to show what's going on. Okay, so let me turn around here. I'm gonna back it up. Oh, that would be cool because then I'll be showing what the Okay, I'm looking at the the lines and the. Okay, so this is my lines, my guidelines. This is straight right here, right when the yellow disappears, and look at what it looks like. It's not too far off, but still, you could see that it's there's a little bit of evidence of being crooked. So the other lights that came on in the gauge cluster, this is what happened. First one was, well, I've got a TPMS issue, so ignore that. I've got a bad sensor that will be finally replaced. The second light that came on was this one right here, four-wheel active steer. And then this is the VDC slip. And then later, the IBA came on. So all these lights, generally, not too scary. I know people are sometimes afraid of technology package vehicles, M56s, M37s, because of all the lights that could come on in the gauge cluster. I don't blame you. The four-wheel active steer is one scary one to people because people that, well, because people that don't know anything, first you're scared because what is this? People that know a little bit are scared because all they can think about is $6,000. If you went to the dealership, People, whenever this light usually comes on, most times people end up getting it fixed. And, you know, if you get a quote from a dealership, they tell you to fix it, it's going to cost us uh, $6,000, give or take. In my case, uh, there probably there are a few reasons this light is on right now, four-wheel active steer. Um, first, in the sport models, it's only active when you have, you know, the four-wheel active steer is only active when it's in sport. If it's in standard... You know, you don't, your system isn't really working. But, well, the light is on right now. We can't really force it off. It could be on because it's an electronic issue and it needs to be reset. And so I'm going to try to reset it. The two ways to reset it. First one would be turn off the car, turn it back on, and see if anything changes. But I have a feeling that's going to be very successful. So I'm going to start with the second option. Second option, whenever I've got crookedness, you know, crooked issues... I usually just, you could do this, you can put it in reverse just so that I can see where the lines are. Can you see the lines? And what I'm going to do is this steering wheel, I'm going to go ahead and turn it all the way to the left and then all the way to the right. I just want the car to remember what the, the end was, okay? So that's what it looks like to the left. Turn it all the way to the right. Looks pretty much the same, right? All the way to the left again. And then all the way to the right. At this point, thing is, once the light comes on, it just means it's in limp mode. So even if I've fixed the issue, I've recalibrated it, the car still is going to stay in fail-safe mode. And it's not really going, the lights don't won't really turn off by themselves. So what I'm going to do is... I want to go to my parking spot first, just in case the vehicle decides to do something goofy. I, I had to jump the bat, uh, the car today because the battery was a little weak. I suppose the 5.6 engine requires a lot of energy to, to crank over. Okay. 
Okay, so what I'm gonna do, park it right here. Okay, look at the lights, you see all of them, right? It's kind of tough showing all these things. Okay, so we got so many lights. Turn off the headlights. I'm going to turn off the car. And then go ahead and turn it back on. This is usually the simplest fix. Turning it off and then back on. As you can see right now, no lights, but what I'm gonna do is first, I'm tempted to like fake it, but no, I'm gonna leave it in sport. Then that will make the four wheel active steer, act, you know, active. Turn on the headlights. As I said, I've got a TPMS issue. This sensor right here always reads so much higher. I've had that problem for a lot of years. I just haven't bothered enough to replace it. But I got some spares and I'll be doing some crazy stuff with wheels over the next few months. So that will be addressed. See, it jumped from 59 to 63. Which is odd because sensors typically don't show you any numbers before you start driving, right? So let's go ahead and start driving. So far so good. And what I'm going to do is drive it in pretty much the same way that I, I know where the problem started. And I'm going to do the same thing to see if I could I can replicate the problem. So right now I'm going straightish and the steering wheel is straight as well. So more or less fixed the problem. I'm not too concerned. It's the kind of thing that people might be curious as to, well, hey, it happened to me one time. And it's, the car drives just fine. It's just that you lose the rear steering of the sport models. But it it's just unnerving to see the steering wheel basically locked in one, in one direction. And what happens is that with the, with the sport models, you have a motor inside your steering column. And this motor basically helps you, you know, whenever you steer. It's got not only a motor, well, the motor, I guess, has a sensing um, properties to know what your steering position is. And so, even when it's straight, if that motor fails, it wants to lock you in one position, it basically goes all the way to the end. That's what happens. But you can still steer, you know, not a, not a big deal. You can still steer your vehicle. So, let's go ahead and get on the road pretty much the same way. I don't know if I explained that very well, but what I was trying to say is that you have the the sport model and the rear steering and all that. The feature is interesting. You don't have just a st you don't have a steering rack just in the back. You have control on the front side as well, and you have the you know the adjustable um, st the adjustable front steering basically, adjustable ratio steering. So this is where the stuff happened. I was gonna go left and it looked and it was a pretty aggressive maneuver, so just get on it. It felt like it drifted when I did it. So, hey, right now it's all good. Same thing I did back then, but we're fine. So, this part right here, me doing this video, I'm gonna go ahead and do this because I'm gonna whip it all the way around. I'm not going to abuse it, but I'm going to do an Yes, a spirited maneuver. People usually ask, we got it, we got it, we got it. Well, there's a car coming. I usually tell people, I mean, you can abuse your car if you want to, but you have to be very careful when you have the sport models because all the weird things you do, all the donuts and all the other stuff you do, and because most times you assume people are gonna be doing that while in sport, mo sport mode, right? Those things do translate to your four-wheel four active steer. As I said, I did not do anything crazy. I was just merging into traffic. But even then... <laughs> I was spinning a little bit. I, didn't, I wasn't able to catch it all. But, so, um, soapbox. What I was saying is that be careful the way you treat your vehicle. Because... Generally, all the things that all the funky things that you do to your vehicle do end up, you know, with regards to aggressive driving, 
donuts sliding and things like that if you have a sport model those things end up affecting your your system you know that's a slip light <laughs> so we're good car is good you know and I'm glad I had my camera ready to pull that out I love showing those issues and look we're driving straight right no problem now so I think at the end of this video someone might look at it and say well this did not solve my problem no 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 this is not this video was not meant to tell you that instead of spending six thousand dollars at the dealership you're going to turn your car off and then back on and then everything's gonna be good no this video is supposed to tell you in some circumstances that's all it takes to fix your problem so if this happened to you while you were driving most probably you were able to turn the car off and turn it back on and the lights disappeared and your question would be do I need to be afraid of it is that is something coming to get me most likely no most likely no but you know the the motors it's not unheard of for the sport models the M M37 sport and the m56 sport to get issues with the four-wheel active steer system right it's not an unheard of for that to happen so i'm not saying that this video just turning it on and off is a is a sure bet you know sure bet of getting rid of all the problems but i'm just letting you know that if it does happen and you turn it off and turn it back on and you keep driving and nothing happens, well, maybe you're in good shape and maybe your car doesn't really have any problems. It's interesting turning this vehicle like at this speed going around <laughs> because it is stable. It is not, the, the rear steering system is crazy. It's amazing. And I don't know if I'll be able to, the crazy thing, I guess the, the goofy thing about videos is that sometimes you can't get the scale of what I'm trying to show you. So if I tell you that I'm about to merge right now, or rather, you know, switch lanes to the right lane, and I tell you I feel like my my car's crab walking, right? Basically shuffling just sideways like a crab, you you can't tell from the video. You you can't tell that at all, but I can feel it in my seat. And I've driven M56s, you know, uh, M45s and all that stuff. I've driven uh, FXs without the rear steering. And the sport models, you can usually tell, they feel different when you drive them. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, I have to do it, you know, sensibly. Basically wait. Okay, now go ahead and march, or rather switch lanes. There you go. Like, it's not, it doesn't dance around, it's, it's good. It just moves where you want it to go, you know? It doesn't sway and tilt and all that funky stuff. It's not not a sports car by any means, but it's good enough. So, what's the other thing? The other thing the uh, sport, the four wheel active steer uh, helps you in is low speed maneuvers. So, like making a U turn in a tight parking spot, parking lot, um, you know, things like that. I can usually tell that the sport models can do it a little better. But again, how can I quantify that to you? I, I can. I think if I had the instruments to collect that data, but how do I show that to you on, you know, on video? So it's just gonna have to take my word for it that this car is performing way better than a non-sport model. If that stuff doesn't matter to you, then you know, obviously don't don't get a sport model, or rather don't pay the extra for the sport model. See now we just turning very sensibly going straight it's pretty straight low speed maneuver go it goes exactly well I want to point it there you go I hit some gravel over there but I point the nose, uh, I point the steering wheel as to where I want the car to go, and it goes. You know? This video has gone way longer than I intended it to be, but I wanted to basically drive around a little bit and show you in case something goofy happened, but nothing happened. 
nuts how quickly I can switch lanes with a sport model, you know? It's crazy. And as I said, it's hard to re relay the, the scale of the difference whenever I'm holding a camera in front of me. If I had like a drone and I had, you know, a sport model versus a non-sport model and try to do the same maneuvers, you could maybe see. But whenever you do the, the you know, the sliding test where you go around cones or something like that, the, the sport, first, the, the M's are pretty big cars. So they're, they're gonna, they're gonna act a little, <laughs> a little unsettled because it's, you know, it's a whole lot of mass doing that for a luxury first, sport second kind of vehicle, you know, or, well, I guess equal parts sport and luxury. So they'll be a little unsettled, but the sport model definitely, definitely feels different. I think this is going to have to be enough video for today. I, when I picked up the camera, I just didn't know, I knew I wanted to share something, but I didn't know how long I was going to be doing it for. So maybe after uploading the video, I'll decide to just go ahead and delete, like, half of it <laughs> yeah so that's it thanks for watching